Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics and welcome back to another great model car video. Well, what I thought I would do is start a new series called Finish It Fridays. And this will be showing on Fridays. Haven't really fully fleshed out a schedule or anything like that. But the reason why I'm making these kind of videos is, as you can see in the background here, I have a ton of model car kits. This is just my model car wall. I actually have more. There's some right behind me, 132nd scale, actually ahead of me, I guess. And uh, yeah, over there is that garage, or well, that, that layout where Danny the dog pops his head up and says, Oh, I like the cool models. You know, I've got that. It's right over there. You can't see it. Oh, I've got this. Little card from Rick Zink. I also have one from Pete. Pete's Model Car Customs. And, uh, well, it's not on hand right now. Anyway, I'm rambling on. So, I have model cars back here that I couldn't do unboxing videos on because I've had model cars since I was eight years old, and that's going back to the 80s. And a lot of them I've built. And then there's some, of course, like all of us, we started to build something and then the project got stalled because maybe we ran out of paint or maybe there was a, a complication with, with uh, parts fit or something. And it just kind of gave up for a bit, put it off to the side. Well, my Finish It Fridays series that we're coming up to is going to show me finishing some of these models. So in our first video, one that I want to finish for a long time is this AMT Ertl 1953 Ford F100 pickup. I thought this would be a good place to start since this truck is really amazing. It's uh, been reissued by AMT ever since the early 1960s when it came out and it's still a really good one that holds up well. Parts detail and fit and finish and all that is excellent in this for the vintage and it's excellent even right now in 2024 and future. Now, I did end up getting myself a pair of brand new reading glasses. Actually, I had a two for one, so that was good because I am nearsighted, which means I can see things close up. Uh, but now that's starting to fail because I just turned 50. <laughs> it's not like my eyes just went overnight, but I, I did turn 50 and it's slowly been progressing out. And remember in some videos I said like I can't see this stuff anymore? Well, I got these reading glasses and they correct that issue. So if I'm going to read the date with my, no like my, my normal prescription is fine, but it's just I don't have that fine anymore, fine uh, vision anymore. So I'm kind of middle sighted now, not near and not far, <laughs> just in the middle. So the date is up here and all I'm seeing is just it's a little bit on gray as you can see black on gray this is just like <laughs> working in the grocery store where i work currently to keep things going uh there's this one <laughs> i have to inspect dates on the deli wall and there's this one package and it's black packaging with black letters on there like how crazy difficult so right now i even if i come up close it's just blurred right out but of course, switching over to my reading glasses. I know this is riveting, isn't it? <laughs> switching over to my reading glasses. Now I can even see the screen, the video screen better. And now I can read 1994, The Ertl Company. So I've had this kit in my collection for since the 90s. It, well, and that's what, 30 years at least? 94, 30 years today. <laughs> my goodness. But anyway, I've been working on this kit and I've just got the box lid because the reason is I'm pretty close to getting this one finished. I just had some issues or whatever. Oh, there is one issue in this kit. We'll get into it. But uh, basically, that's why I'm holding the box here. So without further ado, uh, let's go down to the bench and see where I'm at with this model. Now here we have this wonderful pink lady. I mean, look at this thing. This is pure pinkness at its best. It's a Barbie girl, and it doesn't care. <laughs> anyway, I mean, this thing is actually quite neat. It's um, hot magenta. Now, this was a Model Master color, which was supposed to be like the uh, Dodge 
hot pink or whatever, Chrysler pink. Now, you can see, of course, that I haven't really finished this. I need to put the grill in. In fact, this whole front face plate is loose, as I was uh, taking it out of the box and discovering. Now, the issue with this model is that they only had these Baby Moon hubcap type wheels as a custom choice. Of course, you can build this stock, so that's not an issue. But what I wanted to use was this AMT kit, as most of you know, has these great 1955 Chevy Cameo rear fenders for the pickup truck bed. And these have been customized. They have the little 57 Corvette style taillight molded in, which is really cool if you uh, want to think about it. <laughs> okay, is that enough thinking time? No, but anyway, like, the thing that's cool about this is if you're building a custom AMT 55 Chevy Cameo truck, you can swap out the stock fenders for these, or if you wanted to still have a custom but didn't like the taillight, you know, enclosure, the Corvette style, then you could use the stock Cameo fenders and glue them on. Uh, but the whole issue with this is these wide wheels, these are the... Uh, if I turn this this way a bit. These are Polyglass GT wheels. They're supposed to be like 1968 style Goodyears. The issue is that they do not fit that wheel arch at all. And like I said, in this era, 95, these were the only wheels that came with the kit. So if you wanted the custom, you could not use these wheels, really, unless you were going to, you know, cut that wonderful wheel arch in there, but then you lose the flare and everything. And the only wheels that will actually fit into these are the, or sorry, fenders, are the stock fenders from the Ford kit. And those are a little bit boring, you know. They're not quite as cool as those sculpted cameo wheels. Now, the tonneau cover is removable, but I haven't painted any of the wood grain or anything into that pickup truck bed. Oh, this could explain why it's not tracking in the camera correctly. <laughs> okay, there we go. Just give this a twirl. Now, when I set these uh, up in the camera for this thing, I always try to make sure there's the same amount of space back here as there is here to the edge of the frame. And if I have the model out, when I turn the car around, one end is sticking closer to the end of the frame. But that looks pretty even now, so I must have corrected it. Anyway, oh my goodness, I can see a whole bunch of fish eyes in here on this side. Ah, uh, from my angle. Oh dear. Well, whatever. I just want to finish this kit now because it's been sitting around forever. And since AMT has reissued this kit with the original vintage custom wheels, I might end up swapping these things out. It's only a straight metal axle under there and put in the thinner wheels and tires so that they can fit in my uh, my inner fender opening. Here we have the engine of our model kit and it is the DeSoto Fire Dome and this is just built right out of the box. However, I did paint it white with some nice pink accessories and the whole kind of concept behind this model originally is I wanted to bring this to the model shows and contests and see if I couldn't get uh, couldn't sway the ladies vote and um, I never got there I never got this thing finished to uh, see if that would actually be a thing or not but as you can see there's a lot of cute little items I got this uh, little stuffed bear toy glued it on the seats you got nice pink carpeting going on there and the color match seat belts to the body. The floor pedals are all glued in place and the actual pickup truck bed is not glued down so I'll just take that off there and here you can see the suspension from the top and it's very pink. Yeah, whoops. Uh, let's take this on its side. Okay and just back up a little. There you can see the nice white frame as well as the exhaust. And I haven't finished off the exhaust because it only, like it terminates at the muffler ends. What I need is those chrome extensions that pop out there somewhere. They're 
also included in the instruction sheet. But overall, I mean, this thing looks <laughs> pretty cute. White springs, even. Imagine that. Imagine how greasy they'd actually be, you know, with the uh, <laughs> the packing grease from the springs and everything kind of leaking out here and there. Oh, there's the fuel cell up there and the battery, which go in through the top of the floor and be covered. So there should actually be a hatch on the uh, inner floor panel, but I don't think there is. Now, unfortunately, my white wall here is busted up. I guess that's all right, since I'm going to swap the wheels out. Cool part about this kit is it does include shock absorbers front and rear. So, like, if you look at the back of the axle, there they are hanging in place. And up at the front. I mean, I love this kit. This is one of the best kits ever, and I have about six or seven of them. And uh, I'm going to do a series with the Coca-Cola ones, but uh, that's for the future. Now, flipping the body panels upside down, you can actually see that I didn't really paint any of the inside or underneath pieces. They are all left in the gray plastic it was molded in. Now here you can see the interior with all the overspray. So this is definitely something I've got to correct. I also have the mold marks in all four of the roof corners up in there. I don't know how well you can see that. But it's definitely something I should have removed. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I can still get down there. It's quite a long ways, and it's curved right in that area. So I need one of those... I don't know what the number is. But it's a knife that... Uh, the blade comes across flat like that, and then it's curved up, and then it comes up and has a little notch on it to go... And the notch goes in your knife. That's the one I need under there. Not sure of the number. Um, but anyway... And then, there, like I was saying, there's that front nose piece that pops out. It's got to be glued down. And the front end I was going to use is the Wildcat Grill. Because I use a lot of the, uh, the one I really like better, which is the one with the canted tail... or headlights? Sorry, tail lights. Headlights. Actually, I'll just uh, reach over and grab that. Hang on. So here's my parts trees of all the spare parts of this kit that I have lying around. As you can see, I've built quite a few. That's one. There's three of these. And this is, yeah, just extra bits. So, got the Wildcat grill there. Two of them. Where's the... Oh, here it is. Oh, it's up top on that one anyway. This is the one I usually use. Because I really like that. You've got... Um, I believe these are supposed to be Chrysler, or they could even be uh, Lincoln Continental, like 50, 58 or something. When did they, the big Lincolns, the big odd-shaped Lincolns, had those, like this part. I don't, were they canted? I can't remember. I need a picture. <laughs> anyway, oh, and I also have the stock one, too. So there you go. So I've got quite a few of these parts trees. There's those uh, Corvette things. Those go into here. Let's see chrome for that. So basically my uh, chrome parts tree bits have to come off and go onto the model. But yeah, like I was saying, I thought I would use that Wildcat grill. And this was actually on a real, real uh, Ford truck, this Wildcat grill, a custom one. So these are all accurate. The only thing about it is on the real car, it doesn't have the chrome down here like that. The uh, rolled panel, the rolled pan actually comes down like this into it. And this is all smooth. So you would really have to put this panel in, fill that little line right there, and then uh, <laughs> try to get in there somehow and clean the putty out and then paint that. But I'm not... <laughs> I'm not that crazy. Anyway, so I will have to... I think these bars might have to come out, out of here just to get this to fit a little flusher. You know, get this to sink in a little bit more into the grill right there. But, I mean, that's that's minor. Oh, and I'm only going to go back about sixteenth of an inch. But at any rate, I mean, this is the front that I wanted. I'll just take a little peek here. Quick, quick peek. 
to pique your curiosity. There is another um, grill piece, and it is body color, but I don't have it on hand right here. And it is just a mesh. It's a total mesh. No, like a like a um, grill mesh. M e s c h. I don't know if I spelled that right. Probably not. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Okay, so there it is. And where the bumper is supposed to go through on here and here, there are chrome bumperettes. Let's see if I can spot this on hand here. Do I have any? My parts trees. Last one. Where are you? Oh, here they are. So these are Dagmar bumperettes. You know, sort of like 57 Chev kind of thing. And they're supposed to glue on there and there to cover these two uh, gaps for the stock bumper. So anyway, whoops, there we go. Well, this has nothing to hold it in place. <laughs> and uh, so now for the tail or the box, there is the tailgate. Actually, there's a few pieces. So there's the rear rolled pan, which is supposed to glue underneath here. And that solves the bumper issue for the back because there's actually notches in here and here, buenos notches. And those two duo notches are meant that you cut them out and then put your uh, bumper through there, the factory bumper. So by gluing this, by not removing the notches and gluing this over the top, you get that smooth back end, which is always nice. And then there's two tailgates. One has Ford stamped into it, and the second one is this one, which is the smooth tail panel. That looks good. That'd be nice for a big decal across the back, wouldn't it? Maybe I'll pirate the Wildcat decals and stick them on this. And then this is these funny bits are to hold the tailgate in they would glue there and the top little bit what you see those little two bits sticking out of there that engages the top of the tailgate piece and the bottom one is that loop is for the bottom and then there's another set of holes oops just below them them holes there you can see the lower holes the lower holes are supposed to be for um tail lights I believe or some backup lights or something to that effect it's in the instructions oh speaking of which let's just open those for a sec just to reconfirm that yes so here is the service truck part of the instructions and you can see this tail light would go in down below there and then the tail light bracket with the license plate goes down on the other side of the truck on that other bracket so I'm not sure if I'm going to use these on the custom, maybe, maybe not, hard to say, but uh, at any rate, there's the custom back end from the instruction sheet, and like I was saying, there's those. Now it doesn't show the side lights, Be oh, because the tail lights are back here, there's actually a little clear lens that goes in there, so i got to watch out for where that went. And then your club plaque or license plate could go in there, whatever you want to do. So that would be your back end there of the truck. And like it shows here, you can also use the stock fenders, but put the Mercury taillights on there. And I don't know if these are custom Mercury taillights, but AMT also makes a 49 Merc, so you can always compare these ones to those ones and see if they fit on the 49 Merc. And now here's the other grill. And as you can see, it's got this mesh in behind. They call it the inner grill. And then there's a tube grill goes on top. But I have seen a version of this. It was the Cisco Sizzler. Came out in the 80s in the Diamond on the Rough model kit. It's the first version of this truck I have. And they just show the grill on here. Uh, without, or sorry, the inner grill, which is just the mesh, without the tube grill. So they have that going all the way across the back. And it looks pretty cool. The other thing with this kit is it's got these uh, really cool lake pipes. And then in the back there is a hydraulic lift for the tonneau cover. And uh, 
Let's see. Oh, here they are on the chrome parts tree. We've also got these really cool side mirrors. Actually, I think this is practically a complete chrome parts tree, except for whatever was in here. <laughs> That's gone. But, uh, yeah, there's some really cool bits in this kit. And uh, it's really quite likable. You even get the mirrors, and there's some Nerf bar things, too. Oops, going out of focus. Some pusher bars. So again, really some cool stuff. Now, uh, looking at the Tano cover, I can get the. I had to zoom in for the instructions, so that's what's going on, folks. Okay, you'll notice there's two little U-shaped things, and that's for those hydraulics. And there is a little seam line in here. So the idea is, I guess you take your. You could take your hobby knife and just go down here just to break that little wall, you know, on the edges. Once you break the wall, then you bend this upward at some kind of angle. Um, yeah, so you go up like, like this a little bit, you know, for the hydraulic lifts. I don't know what really is a safe way to do this. Maybe overbend it a little bit, you know, trying not to break this thing in half, but just overbend it a little bit, you know, so sort of up like this, let's say, maybe, maybe that's too high. <laughs> you guys got to go by sense of feel here. And then uh, put it on the truck bed. Doesn't really show where those go on here. There's no, none of those for it. But you would, um, you know, put these little guys... Gee, maybe it doesn't go up that high. I guess they don't go right down to the floor of the truck bed, because it would only be lifted up as a sixteenth of an inch. So wherever you think this is supposed to go, glue them in there, and then push this down until they touch, and glue that in place, I guess that's how it's supposed to go. I don't know. Have any of you used used those little bars out there? If so, let me know. I know I've got a few of these little tonneau covers, so I guess if I screw one up it's not such a big deal. It might be for you if this is your first time building this kit and you have no others, but I don't know. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm noticing my paint in here. Just maybe... I can see a bit of a fisheye in here and it's definitely light on these ribs. So I think what I might do, now that the paint has been sitting here for decades, drying, I think it's pretty safe just to uh, hit that with some fine sandpaper and then spray this again. And I also notice my yellow, or my yellow, my yellow is turning white. My white is turning yellow, and that's not a good sign. So uh, we'll see what we can do. But if you want to see how I did on the dashboard, there it is. Now this is not a factory stock steering wheel. This came from or an AMT stock steering wheel, I should say. The AMT one is that one, and it looks quite thick. This one looks more like a chopped down, uh, maybe an, not not the Edsel wheel, but like maybe a DeSoto or something, or some kind of Chrysler wheel. And unfortunately, the instrument panel, I've just got it all black in there. I can't see if that... Oh, is this... Uh, I thought this was glued in. Maybe I've got a freebie here. Yeah, it's not glued in. Good. Okay, maybe I can see it after. But the issue I have with this is I can't see whatever's going on in there. And even with my new reading glasses on, I still can't see what's going on in there. So I don't know if I can dry brush on the top of that and not like completely smear it all in um, which is one of the issues I have with my eyes right now or if I can just skillfully hit everything that's in there and make it all pop up to life because there are no decals for this or maybe the coca-cola one does have a decal sometimes AMT throws two in there well, let's have a look here we have the decal sheets for both the coca-cola edition as well as the Wildcat Edition. And unfortunately, there are no dashboard decals, so I can't really 
just nicely conveniently put something into this dashboard and be done with it. So unfortunately that's sort of the way it goes. But I do wish I could use these decals in this build. I'm saving them for a different one. But uh, there's the Coca-Cola ones and basically you got enough for uh, almost four trucks here because there's those for the doors or you could use these for the doors. So that's truck one, there's truck two, and then these ones are truck three and those could be truck four. And then you got the cool Coca-Cola license plates and then the American plates. And we also on the Wildcat one got Noah's arc welding and they always have arc welding on these decals. Have you ever noticed that? But inside the truck, it's oxyacetylene. So I don't know why they just don't say Noah's welding instead of the arc welding, because arc is electric and oxyacetylene is two gases that uh, combine together and get ignited in order to give enough heat to melt the metal and weld. But here we have the Wildcat, which is supposed to go on the tonneau cover. And I think, yeah, I think it would go there. So with the, the Wildcat being on one part of the split and the actual image of the cat on the other. But again, I'm going to be saving these decals for something else so they won't go on the truck. But there are a lot of neat race decals and sponsors here as well. And a Nebraska license plate. And Wisconsin or something. I can't read this because I don't have my glasses on. Here's a cool little image on the back of the decal sheet showing the custom with the Wildcat decals in place. And I was wrong. It goes on the tailgate here, the Wildcat, and the cat goes on the back of the tonneau cover. And there's all those cool yellow pinstripes and whatnot. And then down here we've got the service truck. Oh, and they also showed the Wildcat grill. Oh, and like I was saying, here it is here where it's rounded in the corner. That is correct to the real car. And uh, you can't really get that with the grill because it's got the little flat bits just behind the headlights. But that is supposed to be rounded out into there. Just so you know. And you got the dummy spotlights up here as well. Maybe I could put them into this pink car. And then Noah's arc welding down here, and that's the tube grill with the Chrysler style slanted or canted headlights. Again, really cool stuff. It's just too bad this is on the back of your decal sheet so that when you cut out your decals and apply them to your model, you remove the image that shows you where they're supposed to go. So my way around that, of course, is to just scan this in your uh, computer, maybe even scan it and print it out directly and then have this on the side so that you can see what you're doing on your, you know, where this goes when you're uh, chopping these things out with your hobby knife and then apply them to your vehicle. Next week on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. The first thing I'm going to do to continue on this model is try to fit up these fenders with the pickup bed. Here's the grill in the grill surround. This tailgate is sunken in here and down there. In just a matter of a few minutes, I was able to sand the back of the fender. Take your little taillights and stick them down onto a piece of tape. 